yummy i love it i love it especially right now since i'm kind of on a white floral obsession sort of kick careful charlotte it has that benzoin in there i'm not in love with this i know what's wrong with me <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Charlotte. Thank you so much for being here with me today. This is my second installment of that big epic haul I did last time. There was the niche haul. Today we are doing the designer edition designer haul. If you're new here, hi, my name is Charlotte and I love fragrance. I love beauty. If you are into that sort of thing, if you are into those uh, topics, you'll probably love my content here. So definitely subscribe and ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss any any of my future uploads and if you're a returning subscriber or viewer thank you so much for being here with me today thank you so much for your continued support your viewership means so much to me and yeah hello to all you new people there's a lot of new people here Karina Waldron thank you so much shouted me out last week and I was so not expecting that that was so kind of her it was really out of the blue like for me I was just like what I, anyway for i was i was very very grateful and very happy and uh, very flattered karina is one of the first fragrance youtubers that i began watching so i look up to her and have a lot of respect for her and so that was really sweet um so if you are a karina watcher and you came here from her thank you so much for joining me here as well and i'm so happy to have you here Let's get into the haul. A little bit of a different setup today that I'm just trying out. Uh, if you like it, let me know. If you don't really like it, let me know. Before we get into it, if you like this kind of content, definitely like the video to let me know and let's get, let's get into it. So the first fragrance I have to share with you is by the house of Lalique. And I, you guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think Lalique is kind of underrated. They don't necessarily have the strongest fragrances, the, I mean, I have not tried them all, okay? So I'm just saying, with the handful that I know of. They don't necessarily have like the most potent fragrances all the time. That sounds bad, huh? They're not not long lasting. I just mean they're not beast modes like Mansera, Montal, you know, those kinds of fragrances. So maybe they get like pushed under the radar. They go under the radar. There you go. They go under the radar. Why am I doing this? Just here this is the fragrance okay this is called sweet amber by lalique uh, and this is from their composition parfumé line les compositions parfumées yeah sweet amber lalique first of all this bottle is so pretty all of lalique's bottles are so pretty i think they are like glassware designers so it would make sense like that sometimes you want them just for the bottle they have really really pretty bottles this is no exception in my opinion this part of the cap right over here is kind of like a uh, it's weird it feels like almost like it's not it almost feels like wood or foam or yeah anyway i think it's really pretty i think it's a really really pretty bottle and the juice inside the juice the perfume it's such an easy easy reach for me this is just jasmine vanilla this has been called like a lighter airier less potent alien I've seen that in the reviews and I understand like I don't have the original alien but I have the alien flankers and I have smelled like the EDT sample so I understand the comparison but this one is a little bit more and like, I totally get it like yes absolutely if you like alien you will probably like this and vice versa this one however is a little bit more vanillic and yeah to me it's just like a sweet soft spicy musky sweet jasmine vanilla and tuberose it's like a white floral vanilla tuberose but it feels a little bit soft spicy and that is the if i am correct i think it's anise i think it's anise anyway yeah you 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 just you do get that undertone throughout and this is so pretty i have worn this a few times now it is not very long lasting i have to say it's just okay in that department so i do need to say that but this is also not one of the most expensive fragrances either so it's about the same as other middle of the road designer fragrances it's really really pleasant it's an easy reach for me i don't think it's a must have by any means but i do think it's underrated and i do think it's kind of a hidden gem in the sense that like this is so nice and no one seems to really talk about this 
uh yeah i've been wearing this around the house a lot it's just very pretty and soft and easy to wear this has been compared to the alien hair mist i believe i've seen that before which makes me think maybe it's just because it's lighter in which case like yeah it is it's a little bit lighter but not lighter than like aliens like alien let's see like alien Eau Extraordinaire or Alien Eau Sublime. Those are different fragrances. This one is a little bit more of a solar ambery citrus alien. Whereas Alien Eau Extraordinaire is a tea, tiare mainly sort of take on alien. This really is just like alien, but maybe a little bit more soft spicy with the anise and a little bit more toned down and a little bit more vanilla. So to me, like honestly, the thing I could compare it the most to with the Alien, maybe like a toned down Alien Essence Absolute because it's more vanillic to me than the regular Alien, but it's definitely, definitely not like that big, like loud powerhouse of Alien Essence Absolute. So yeah, that's what I can kind of compare it as. Maybe like a very soft Alien Essence Absolute, just more of a vanilla Alien. Okay. There you go, that's Sweet Amber by Lalique. And this is classified as an amber floral. Next up, the fragrance I have to share with you is by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I did it, you guys, I got it. I got the Scandale à Paris. If you have not already seen my comparison of the three Scandales, I do have already, I will leave a link. But yeah, in that video, I said I didn't have this one and I said I was probably not gonna get it anytime soon. Well, now I did get it. And this is lovely. I have not worn this a lot, and I will tell you why. I mean, I did just get it, but still. This is uh, considered to be a Chypre floral or Chipper floral. Do you say Chipper? Chypre? Like, I've heard some people say it in French, and like, obviously, if it's French, I'll say it in French because I speak French. But I thought it was Chipper. I thought that's how you said it. I thought it was said in English, Chipper. Anyway, so this basically is a sweet honey bomb like the others, but without the patchouli. It's still very, very sweet, very sweet, but it's a more aquatic sort of like sheer watery honey, but it's just as sweet, okay? So you don't have that animalic undertone um, that sort of mingles with the patchouli, but honey is already, to me, still a little bit animalic. So there's still that, but the honey is more is more of like a crystal clear honey. It's like a crystallized clean honey, I guess, with a little bit of that pear and a white floral. I think it's jasmine, is it jasmine, I think? Very, very nice. Still a little bit too sweet honey to me, personally, for the summertime. So yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna wear this because I like the other scandals. I see this more as a scandal that yes, you can get away with wearing in the summertime. I just have a personal sort of aversion to honey scents in the summer. I feel like I attract insects if I smell that sweet or yeah. <laughs> but if the other scandals were too patchouli heavy for you or too animalic or too heavy and dense but you still didn't mind the sweetness you might like this one i think that's why this one is considered definitely a more safe sort of scandal especially for younger populations i think this is more palatable sometimes than the other scandals. The next designer fragrance I picked up was another flanker of black opium. You guys know I like black opium. I know there's a lot of hate for black opium. I don't care. It's an amber vanilla, so it's straight up my alley, right up my alley. Uh, this is black opium neon, and this is so pretty, you guys. Um, I've worn this a lot actually around the house. But I love the pitaya, the pitaya and citron opening, lemon, but it says citron, so I don't know if it's like, like, is that like a fancy lemon? I don't know, you guys, citron. I'm gonna say citron because I speak French, but I don't know why it's called citron on fragrantica instead of lemon, okay? Just saying. It's so addictive smelling, like, I, I love the scent. Very bubblegummy at the top. I think it's the pitaya and the white florals. It's so, yeah, the pitaya opening is, I didn't know what that smelled like before. And now I'm like, oh wow, that's so yummy. I love it. It smells tropical, but very bubblegummy. This is a brighter, more fruity, citrusy black opium. And yeah, it's, it's just really fun. That pitaya with the white florals just makes it a lot more fun and bright and 
yummy i love it i love it especially right now since i'm kind of on a white floral obsession sort of kick right now so yeah black opium black opium neon by yves saint laurent the next fragrance i picked up is also another amber vanilla and this is lancome la nuit trésor à la folie so this has been on my radar for a very long time and i have to say you guys I'm not in love with this. I know, what's wrong with me? This is an amber vanilla with a bunch of vanilla. It's the vanilla heavy La Nuit Trésor. And I don't know if I like the bourbon vanilla in here. It's very smoky, it's a little bit smoky. It's sweet, I still get the La Nuit Trésor DNA, of course. But there's something in it that I found a little bit cloying or sickening and I don't know, it seems to be the bourbon vanilla. But this is also not the optimal weather for it and I definitely think this is something that will do a lot better in the fall. So I, 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 because of that, I don't have much to say about it. I, I will just say that to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed when I first smelled it. It's not a bad scent but there seems to be something disjointed or jarring between the rose, the like La Nuit Trésor, like rose scent clashing with the bourbon vanilla. I don't know, I, I don't know yet. I'm just being honest with you guys. That's where I'm at right now is I don't know yet. And I've tried it, I think I wore it, I've worn it twice so far and both times I was like not very happy with it. So yeah, but I have high hopes for it though. I have high hopes for it in the fall. Okay, I do. Smoky scents are, are fall and winter scents for me. Like, I tend to not like them other times a year. So I need to give it a shot, okay? And yes, this is very shocking. I know that I would not love this at first sniff, right? Just okay at first sniff right now. So yeah. It might also be the red currant. I'm not sure. Red currant and bourbon vanilla. I'm not sure what it is that's jarring for me. Next up we have a major hit. Um, this was not actually a love at first sniff. It was like a like at first sniff and after a couple war after a couple wears it became a absolute like love. Like I love it. I'm a little bit obsessed with it and this is by Givenchy and this is L'Interdit. This is L'Interdit, uh, the EDP, the Eau de Parfum. The first time I smelled this, I was actually a little bit surprised because it's been compared, or I feel like this has been compared to like My Way and what other floral? <laughs> what other tuberose heavy perfume? Anyway, My Way, which I have a little decant of and that I'm actually gonna exchange for a full size, like as a voucher thing. Anyway, I have a little decant of My Way, so I know what it smells like. And My Way to me is a lot more of a youthful, clean, super clean bubblegum scent, like very clean bubblegum. This is a lot more soft, spicy to me. It has a lot more going on. It has the vetiver in there that I definitely smell. It's a lot more, um, it's more complex. It's more grounded it's a lot more mature and for me mature does not is not a negative connotation okay i don't picture a little girl wearing this that's all it means for me and in that sense it is very sexy oh yeah that's the other one it was compared to so scandal and so yeah no i would say no i get like yes there's two rows i get the two rows but it's very different it's like a soft spicy warm there it is a bit bubblegummy yes and it's not only that it is a bit grapey too i think i've seen some people describe it as grapey and at first i was like i guess it's because i i don't have much like of a scent memory with grapes or grape juice but like yeah it does have a little bit of that like very strong artificial grape juice sort of smell when you spray it at least at the beginning in the opening this is so lovely i'm really enjoying it and uh, i will wear this a lot I mean, I have been wearing this a lot, but this is a really good year-round signature scent, to be honest. Very good contender for a signature round, signature, <laughs> signature year-round scent, L'Interdit EDP by Givenchy. And this is also classified as an amber floral. Next up we have by Juicy Couture. I know, I know. I said I wasn't gonna get another one, but I did. I finally got the one that I really did want, which was Gold Couture. As you can see, this is a tester bottle, as it says right there. I should probably take that off. And I like this. 
I like this. Uh, I was not expecting the best scent in the world. Remember, I just wanted the right Juicy Couture for me. And the one I had before that was, or the one that I still have somewhere anyway. Um, Viva la Juicy Noir. Uh, I did not like the heavy dose of the berries. And I actually really like berries and perfume, but the berries in Viva la Juicy, I find like metallic or just not very good. But I do like the caramel, honeysuckle, white floral thing going on in this one. And I've used this a lot for layering too. It's just like when I want some caramelly white floral shot to go with whatever else I have. It's really nice. So yeah, I'm happy to have it in my collection and I, I'll keep wearing it. Very nice, fun, easy to wear, floral, fruity, gourmand. Finally, finally, finally have it. Next up we have by Dolce & Gabbana and this is Dolce Shine. And this was kind of an impulsive purchase, this one. It was like not on my list for a long time. I just, it was just, it just entered my mind at the right time. You know, when you're like filling out your order and you need to pick another one or something like that. That's kind of what happened or it was like at the right time. And it's funny because when I first opened this, like from the nozzle, it reminds me so much of like um, the saltiness in the salt, the same sort of saltiness that I didn't love in uh, DKNY Stories and Womanity and Womanity by Mugler. But when you spray it, it's a lot more of like a creamy, sweet, salty, Yeah, there's not a lot of mango. Like you get a little bit at the top, the mango and what is it? Is it quince? I think it's quince. Mango, there's the ozonic notes, which you definitely get. It makes it seem like, in this, the ozonic notes and the salt just kind of make it feel a little bit aldehydic to me. So like sparkling and uh, a little bit astringent feeling to me. But it's actually really nice. Uh, definitely very, very, very much a summer sort of scent to me. Like I, yeah, a summer in the sun, tropical beachy sort of scent. It really does evoke like sunshine. It really does. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about this so far. It's a floral fruity. I'm not blown away by it, but it is nice. And I look forward to wearing it some more. Next up we have by Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Chu or Jimmy Chu? Amber Fever. And this is one that has been on my list for a long time. I kind of went through like my designer phase and then this didn't make the cut. And then I started going into niche and then I was just like, didn't want to overlook this, especially since this one seemed to have such amazing notes. Like I think it has caramel, toffee, coffee. It has so many delicious gourmand notes. And it's an amber vanilla, so I knew I had to try it. But it also has a lot of patchouli in it. I don't mind it completely, but I need to be in the in the mood for it. This has a lot so this also has a lot of plum in it at the top, which I don't love, but it does dissipate after a while, and I do like I would say I mostly like the mid. The dry down feels a little bit like it does sort of like just kind of become, I feel bad saying this, but it feels like it becomes a little bit like a mess. Like it just kind of like becomes this like fuzzy, fuzzy nondescriptness. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? So that's what to me makes it seem like not as good quality is that it does kind of become like that fuzzy sort of nothingness on my skin after a while. But I still enjoy it, even though it's not a unique sort of scent or scent profile, it is a unique scent in my collection. So for that reason, like I, I enjoy it and I'm gonna keep using it and I'm excited to continue experimenting with it. And then last, but certainly not least, why did I keep this last? Anyway, I got by the house of Eli Saab. And you guys, I just recently learned that I've been saying it wrong all this time. So yeah, it's apparently, it's not Ellie Sab, it's Eli Sab. Maybe it's not even Eli, maybe I'm saying it wrong again there, but anyway. Apparently it's Eli Sab, so I apologize for that. By Eli Sab, this is Le Parfum in White, and this is something that I was not sure about. When I got it, I was like, careful Charlotte, it has that benzoin in there, and sometimes I don't like benzoin. And this is one of those heavy benzoin fragrances. So, like the La Nuit 
at FLE. I need to test this out in different weather because I know the benzoin is gonna like especially irritate me right now in warmer weather or in summer. Benzoin is very similar to vanilla but it definitely always ends up feeling more like it can feel fuzzy again to me and annoying and overbearing to my nostrils too but it is also a warming sort of balsamic vanillic note so i need to experiment with this some more i also wanted to say that this is an aged like it even said when i bought it that this was an aged vanilla bottle so you can see like the juice or the perfume is more of that ambery color and i was like oh i'm, I'm okay with that like if anything it's like the older formulation but i also don't get like the the top notes wow that just smells like alcohol i just don't feel like i get as much of the top notes and i know it could just be that um it is maybe an older bottle and it's really pretty though right now you guys see that's why a haul is just a haul okay it's i always feel like i have to give a full review but i cannot give a full review i'm still testing these out right but see right here on my hand, it actually smells quite nice. So, I don't know. What I can say about this is that it is a more vanilla forward um, Eli Sab Le Parfum flanker. But it also has that benzoin in there. And if you're a benzoin adverse person, you might not like that about this one. Okay, now I am getting the berries though. You know what I mean? So, sc scrap that. Um... That's so strange. Anyway, there you go. And this one is also a Chypre floral or chipper floral. Is it Chypre? Chipper? Chypre? Chipper? I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like the video before leaving. That really helps me out, helps my channel out. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know down below what your latest purchase has been or just like what you think of some of these fragrances that I got. I'd love to know what your thoughts are because I know a lot of these are pretty popular in the community. A lot of you have probably already smelled them, have them probably already in your collection, so I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. Until we see each other again, please take care of yourself and I'll see you very soon. Bye.